Some of our families come to us with huge, big, strong, powerful problems in their life. In some instances, things they don't think they can overcome. What do we do? Well, we put them in front of a huge, big, strong, powerful animal, the horse, and they form a relationship they never dreamed could happen. My name is Bill Shear, and I'm uh, one of the co-founders here along with my wife, Marcia, of uh, Whispering Race Horses and now Freedom Farm. Both my wife and I grew up with horses, um, standard bred racetracks, and traveled all over the country. And then we got out of horses completely, and I had aspirations of becoming an educator, a, a teacher, a coach, and school administrator. Uh, we were able to be directed back into horses again some eight years ago, and this time completely differently. Being introduced to a, to a thoroughbred was, was truly amazing for me, and, and uh, she, uh, she is the one that started Whispering Grace Horses. When we were introduced to her, she was so skinny, had no hair on her back, could see every bone in her body. And I said to Marcia, I said, I've been around hundreds of horses, but I don't think I've, I've seen one try this hard. The more I saw that, the more I began to, to put together this relationship thing in terms of what's it take to have a relationship with horse? Well, you know, it takes patience, it takes trust, takes forgiveness and what it means to try. And why is that any different than what we should put into our everyday relationships with people? Not to sound irrational, but a horse changed our lives. We kind of brainstormed a little bit and we said, do you think because she changed our lives, she might be able to change some lives of some other people? And that's how Whispering Grace Horses evolved. We started out with two families in 2012. Those two families have developed into 230 families now in 2019. You know, we pictured retirement a little bit different than this, but there is absolutely, positively nothing else we would rather be doing. We were told very, at the very, very onset of this whole deal how difficult this was gonna be. People ask us all the time when they look at our facilities, you know, if you don't charge people for coming out here, how in the world were you able to build this facility? That's another part of this whole situation that I can't really explain because the right people have found us um, at a time in our life when we needed them the most. Living in Stark County my entire life, I don't think I was this aware of, of what a tight-knit community it is. We have had so many situations um, where people want to, to give. It's amazing how many good people are out there um, and just waiting for the right situation that they can evaluate and see where their dollars and cents are going. There are several examples of, of how this works. The young man was 11 years old, was going through some turmoil in his life, and because of that was going to break up a husband and a wife. We had a young lady that worked with this young man, this boy, all summer. And um, the father came in and he said, could I meet the little girl that's been working with our son? And we introduced him and he says, young lady, he says, I know you don't know this, but you should go to bed tonight just knowing that you saved a marriage. We had a young man that came to us. We went to his expulsion hearing at school. His parents couldn't get him out of his room because he was constantly on the computer or on his phone. We got him out here to the barn. He started talking to us in ways that he never talked before. One night his dad called me, a, a steel worker, okay? And uh, he said, Bill, he said, this is, uh, this is Matt. You know Jimmy? And, and I said, well, yeah. 
I've been coming to the barn, we've been doing some good things out there. And he says, well, tonight I dropped him off at a buddy's house. He says, uh, Dad, I love you. Thanks. <laughs> this emotion. Sometimes I think everybody comes here just to see me cry. Just so we get it kind of clear in terms of Whispering Grace Horses and Freedom Farm, how they are separate. Freedom Farm was just built in November of um, 2018. And our board of trustees, as we began to, to grow, they kept asking us, well, well can't we have a, a program for our, for our veterans? And I said, man, I wish we could, but we can't. We're so crowded now. I mean, we've gone from three horses to seven horses. We've gone from 30 families to 230 families. They said, well, isn't that land, isn't that land across the street for sale? We don't have the money. And I can remember they didn't even let me finish the sentence. One of our board members donated that land that we're standing on right now. Electricity was provided, plumbing was provided, our posts and trusses were provided, our excavating was provided, our sand and gravel was provided, and, and here we are at Freedom Farm. And it's strictly a place for our veterans and their families. You know, our horses in Whispering Grace Horses and Freedom Farm, they don't overly work physically, but man, do they work hard mentally. They're with so many different people. We needed horses that we could work with. Our horses have either been in sickly situations or situations where uh, people no longer wanted them. Four of our horses are from, from the kill sale. They were ready to be used for dog food. The horses that we have now are worth thousands of dollars less than those horses I used to have years ago. And yet, when you come to see our facility, this is what they've built. As we began to grow and we first built our barn, we thought we had figured it just right on the money in terms of what we would need. We had a tractor and a manure spreader. That's all we had. We had to buy a hand push lawnmower. Then somebody gave us a brush hog to use and then uh, and then we started to, to have other needs. We underestimated what we needed. I've known about Ventrac for quite a while. I'd go to, to lawn and garden stores and they would always kind of move me on over to this Ventrac and tell me what a great piece of machinery it was. The Ventrac tractor, we call it the beast. The beast, because it can do anything at any time. It doesn't matter whether it's raining, doesn't matter whether it's cold, doesn't matter whether there's snow on the ground, and it doesn't matter whether it's a beautiful day. Whatever utilization we need for something around here, we use the Ventrac. We have the 72 inch mower deck on it. Uh, we pull our arena drag with it. Uh, the articulation that it, that it has allows us to get as close as we can with that unit to the fence. What it can do, just amazing especially for the, even for the little guy. That's the thing. That's where, you know, we're, we're not one of these huge outfits, although, you know, what we do is, has become rather large, but, but the Ventrac to us is, is a universal tool that we use just about every day. I don't know what we do without it now. We are blessed, there's no question about it. And so uh, with that, you know, we're, we, we just welcome those who, who may have a situation in their life where they just wanna come and take deep breaths and enjoy a lot of camaraderie, a lot of talk, not being overly observed, not being documented, but just maybe laughing, crying, or praying. The whole, all those three ingredients we consider a good day. And so, what's next? Um, he'll smile and tell us sometime, so we'll find out what it's all about. <laughs>